Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video. Today we are going to work on this finally. 1963 Gottlieb Swing Along Pinball Machine. Doesn't it look like it's swinging? Now this one is a 10 footer. Now if you don't know what a 10 footer is, it means from 10 feet away it looks pretty good. <laughs> what do you think, Joe? Yep. 10 footer? Yep. Somebody has repainted this thing in the past. And they did a good 10 foot paint job. Now, we were planning on repainting it and touching it up a little bit. But then what happened, Joe? How come we're not going to repaint it? The lady came in and she liked it like it was, said she had to have it. And she wants it real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yeah. Today. Today. Got to spend that money today. Got to spend that money today. Can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> it's got to be today. <laughs> But she's going to have to wait until tomorrow because I don't think I can fix it in one day. It's going to take a few days. But we might be able to fix it by the weekend. So we figured we'd film it while I was fixing it. What do you think about that? But we were going to repaint it or touch up the paint. I looked online at the flyers showing the original game. And this the art is how it was originally. It's just they didn't do a great job painting it. So like stuff like this. Here, I'll get, I'll get close just for a minute. And then we'll never get that close to it again, so y'all can't uh, think that I did it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, uh, you know, uh, that ain't really the best way to do it. You know, like this right here, that part, you see what I'm talking about? So, we're going to leave it, though. I mean, it's presentable. And in the future, somebody else can repaint it if they want, if they find this sucker. And, now, Joe, when you bought this, they told you it worked, right? Yes. Lady said she fixed it. Yep, said she fixed it by watching YouTube. She fixed it by watching YouTube. Now, let me show you something that I've noticed on it. Inside of this sucker, there is a pipe attached to a string. And when I pull it, I can feel something in there moving. Okay? So... I fixed it by watching YouTube. She wasn't watching my channel. <laughs> but maybe it has been fixed. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. That's interesting though, isn't it? Makes you think. So this is a 1963 and it's called Swing Along. And I like it. I like the theme of it. So you got these swing dancers. Look at this girl. Ain't she just having a blast? Look at her. Oh, Richie, you're just the greatest dancer. Look, she's swinging. This couple here, they look a little older, but they're swinging too. Then we got the people back on the table. I think that's a I think that's a woman. Might be a dude. Wait, this is 1963. Yep, that's a woman. She looks upset. But anyway, so it's got this cool kind of band kind of thing going on where they're at a party. Look, there's bubbles in there. So it's a, it's a foam foam party. <laughs> Cool back glass. It's faded a little bit. I think these guys' jackets were probably red originally. I believe that was red originally. Um, this is like more like a, a pink here in person. Yeah, see, look. It's faded away. The years have faded it, but it looks pretty good. You can also, I have seen this back glass on eBay. And it's even kind of kind of affordable. But the lady said she liked it the way it was. She would just prefer that it works. So that's what we're going to do. So it's got a pretty clean uh, play field. There's not much here. We're going to clean it up and everything. But there's not much here to fix. You know, There's a little bit of wear here. But I'm not going to mess with that. That's minor. That somebody has put these protectors down here on the flippers. Sometimes the flippers will drag the play field a little bit as they swing, as they swing along. 
So somebody has put these little protectors there that usually you put around pot bumpers, like they've put up here. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'd, I'd pull them off, but I don't know. They're probably covering something. There's probably some wear under them, so I'm just going to leave them. And the lady's already seen it. She likes it, so what we need to do is get it working good. All of the plastics look good. Nothing looks broke. We've got one little white plastic up here that's broke. That might be a problem. Might have to go order some of them. And it's got these three spinners right in the middle of the play field. A trumpet, a saxophone, and a drum. That's pretty cool. Um, and then it's got some stand-up uh, targets, four of them around the edges, and then it's got four pop bumpers. It's got rollovers at the top. So The rollers... Uh, 20, 30, and 50 points. Pretty cool. So let's look in the back box. Now, remember the woman fixed it by watching YouTube. But I'm going I'm to teach you something here on YouTube that she didn't notice. She has the cord just hanging out of the back of the game. Right? So, let's... We're going to Sherlock Holmes this and figure out what must have happened here. So what do we know about this cord hanging out of the back of the game? Well, she didn't, she couldn't figure this out. It actually goes in there. So whenever you go to put the head on, you kind of put it through that little slot there and it comes out there. So she didn't catch that, which is, how many times have we done that, Joey, where we don't put the wire through? Four or five. We've done it four or five times herself, so I'm not getting on her. But I'm just saying, because of that, it led to a great folly. <laughs> a, a, a large uh, chain of events happened because of that. So because she didn't figure out to put it through that little slot, she had to hang it out the back. And then you can plug it in to the wall. But when you do that, when you go to put the door on, you can't put the door on. That's why you got to put it through that slot so you can put the door on. So if you can't put the door on, you lay the door to the side somewhere. Now, Joe, did you go pick this thing up? Yes. When you picked it up, didn't have the door on it, did it? No, I looked around. Couldn't find it. No door. So they moved it and lost the door at some point, which means now we don't have one, which is a big pain in the butt because... They're weird sizes, you have to make one, or you know, try to get a metal one, or make one out of wood, which changes the way the, the bells and the chimes sound. So just that one little thing of not putting the wire through there caused all kinds of problems. But it is what it is. So here in the back box, we have the zero to nine unit here. Everything looks nice and clean. Over here, we have the balls played unit. We have a one point relay, a ten point relay, and a hundred point relay. Up here we have the replay unit that tells you how many games you have left on it, how many little quarters you put in. And then we've got these three here that I can't read the labels on because I've got dust all over them. Because they're lying flat, you know. And then we have six score reels. Everything looks pretty good, though. This is actually very similar to that masquerade we did. The, the reels look similar. Um, I think they were about the same time period, I believe. Maybe the masquerade was a little bit later. Remember on the masquerade, we had this bell here was cracked, but it was mounted in the same spot. That's pretty good. And we've got our three Jones plugs here. That's all good. And they haven't cut the wires on this one like some of the other ones. So we're starting with a nice, pretty nice game. It's in good shape. So, uh, whoa, we're too bright now. So I'm going to take the glass off. And we'll look inside of it and see what it looks like inside. All right, Joey, now talk to us about the legs on this thing. People, people don't know anything about these. When we've got it, what, what was on the front of this thing? It had little tiny legs. 
They're probably 25 inches. 25 inches or so. So this whole thing was about two inches lower. Okay. And then the back ones had like 28s or something. So it didn't sit right and everything else. So somehow along the way, they had put, and I don't even know how they found 25 inch legs. I've never even heard of one having those. But they had put the thing together with those legs and it just, it was way too low to the floor and all that. But on this particular one, since it's a Gottlieb, they only used two sizes of legs. The, the ones that had the, the thinner bodies, uh, like the wedge heads, uh, they used 31 inch legs. And then the, the older ones with the big tall bodies use 27 inch legs. And then the ones in the middle like this actually use both sizes of legs. So the front uses 27s and the back uses 31s. And it looks, you know, it sounds like that would be crazy, but look at it. That's right. That's how it's supposed to be. It's just a weird, weird design. But anyway, let's check out the inside here. I'm going to show you what they fixed by watching YouTube. <laughs> so this thing is very clean. There is a little fuse block over here. And then look at what we have here. All you nerds are going to love this one. It's a freaking mercury tilt switch. Can you believe that? Wonder what happens if you bust that piece of glass there. Or I guess that's what that is. I'm sure they'll tell me, Joe, if that's not what that is. Actually. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> <sighs> Moving right along. So on the, on the bottom of the play field, we get so many comments, people. You would not believe some of the comments we get. It's unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. I found <laughs> the proper way. <laughs> this guy told me the other day something about doing it like this would have been preferable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been preferable. You do yours like that, buddy. All right, so there's some relays down there on the bottom of the play field. There are the four pop bumpers. There is a little mini target bank up here of five little, I mean, relay bank up here of five relays. You got your flippers. Boy, this thing looks clean, man. This is a nice game. Joe, you sold it too cheap. Mm. Oh, well. uh, he sold it too cheap, people. He went too cheap. And then down here in the bottom, there is the score motor, which doesn't have but about half of the switches that are usually on the ones that are later than this. And then there are a few little Spartan relays here and there that don't have hardly any switches on them. So they've all got like two switches. Hardly nothing. And then a few here. And then there is the, the uh, reset bank. Right? So here's what they fixed by, uh, <laughs> by watching YouTube. They have tied a string to the control bank's Reset relay. And tied it to this pipe so you can pull like hell and reset that damn thing. So, just to clarify, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to do that. I'm seeing... Have they stolen anything else out of here? <laughs> Is there anything else missing, Joey? Not that I know of. Where are my bells? I don't see my bells. I see one knocker. Let's see, maybe there's only one or two. And then we got this one back here. Mm, there might only be two bells, Joe. This is old. Maybe. Oh, God. Look. There's a clapper down under this one. But there's there's no bell for it to clap. Here we go with this crap. Alright. Well, the thing's in pretty good shape anyway. So I don't know about uh 
I don't know about the bells. We'll figure that out, though. But all in all, it's very clean. I wonder if I have the schematics. That might be an issue, too. Hmm. I might have to look at pictures of other people's to see if there's anything missing. But you can see they've touched up the paint, and they did a decent job on everything. I mean, it does look pretty clean. And then you can see this is, uh, let me darken it up a little bit. kind of hard to show but the white is more of like a they've painted it twice it looks like so this is more of like a yellowed white and this is more of like a refrigerator white <laughs> that's what I always call it appliance white yeah you can see it a little bit there see how they're different so that's under the lock bar so on these the lock bar has this big shooter rod attached to it and you take the whole thing off as one piece very cool. All right, so what are we, how are we going to fix it? So the first thing we're going to do is, like we always do, I'm going to take the play field out of it so that we can get down there into the base of it. And uh, if I can get the focus. Okay, we can get a better look at the relays. You can see what I'm talking about. There's not much to them. There's just a couple switches on each one. So there's three on that one, three on that one, three on that one, three on that one. Three on that one, two on that one, one on that one, one on that one. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to vacuum out all of this, and then we're very carefully going to clean every one of those switches so that they make good contact. And then uh, we'll figure out what's going on with that reset relay. I'm going to go ahead and take this cord off. We'll figure it out. Now you're, what you would think, just off the top of your head, if you haven't worked on these, is, oh, the, the coil's probably bad. These things usually don't go bad. Do -de -do 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 -de -do -do. <laughs> usually it doesn't go bad, so hopefully it isn't this time. But uh, whatever makes that work isn't working, and we'll figure that out. Um, but one of these other switches will be responsible for making that reset. So we'll, we'll look in the schematics and figure it out. And I was just reading about it. And this is the first game with a spinner on it. That's why it says swing along. It's a swinger. It's a swinging spinner. And there's three of them suckers. Now, real quick, name me another pinball machine that has three spinners. <laughs> you can think of one. What? It's got three spinners. What's another one that's got three spinners? Ah, you can't think of one, huh? There's probably some. Leave your comments below if you know the one. All right, so I'm going to vacuum this out, and we'll uh, we'll clean it up, and I'm going to cut out that pipe thing. You folks were here and saw it, but we're not leaving it in there. We're going to fix it the right way. Hey, hey, hey. Um, so I'll throw this in the trash. Or should I save it for a souvenir? Should I? Will it, can I break it? God, it's like a fishing line or something. How big of a... How big of a of a fish could go on it. I don't want to pull it too hard. I'm afraid I'll break the, bend the bracket. Um, see, I'll vacuum this out. We'll get it looking better, and then we'll start cleaning the switches, and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm going through and cleaning these switches. I'll just show you how the, the trick to it. So basically, I'm using like an old worn-out file, and I'm cleaning the contacts, but you don't want to go crazy or use like a really aggressive file because you don't want to actually lose the points on the thing, right? to have a coating on it too. So you're trying to get it where whenever this relay pulls in that the armature just makes the switches change state. So all of these are open right now and when I pull this in they all close. And you see how the little blade moves a little bit whenever whenever the, the big blade hits it? That's how you want it. You want it to be fully open, fully closed, and for the smaller blade to move a little bit whenever it presses it. That way you know you're moving through it, right? So those are the ones that are normally open. And then there are some that are normally closed, like this one. Right. Whoa, okay. So this one right here is normally closed. And whenever, see how whenever it pulls in, it opens it, right? This one here is an illusion. This is actually two switches. There's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. The one on the top 
is closing and the one on the bottom is opening. Same thing. Okay, and then there is one like this. The swinging target control relay. So look at this one. Look, it does both. The middle blade is the long one and it closes on the left one, which is just barely moving. And it opens on the right one. And it looks like maybe they're still touching, but it's not. I checked it. So watch. Is that still moving a little bit? So it is open. It's just barely. So that one's a little close, but it's, it's, it's good. It's good to go. So I'm going through and cleaning them all and adjusting them. Now, if they're pretty close, like see how that one was pretty close, but it, you could probably make it a little better, don't. Leave it alone. If it's working, leave it alone. I mean, if it, so like on that one, it's closed, and whenever I, whenever I push it, it's opening, and this one's closing, closing, right? But it almost looked like this one was still closed, but I checked it, and it's not. It is opening, just, just a little bit. So you could bend it and try to make it perfect. Don't. Leave it alone. If it's close, leave it. Reason being, uh, there's kind of like a timing to these things, and they kind of get where they wear into how they want it to be. And if you go around and start adjusting every little switch, trying to make it perfect, you're going to screw up five or six places, so don't do that. But if it's obviously bent and it's not working right, fix it. Okay. There's this thing right here where this was the 115 volt hold relay, and they've removed the relay and have the wires just hanging here. Okay. And then if you look, they have bent the switches so that it's as if the relay is permanently pulled in. So these two switches, the black and the orange can never touch, and the black and the red are always touching. So we need to look on the schematics and see exactly what they were doing there. That's probably fine the way it is, but uh, that probably will prevent us from ending a game or, or what, I don't know, but we'll figure that out by looking at the schematics. I'm sure there's some reason they did that, though. If you look at this coil, this is a hold coil as well, and you see how it's black looking and the wrapper's missing? It's just because the hold coils are on all the time, the whole time the game's on, so they get hot. Hot, 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 hot. Okay, so next I'm going to do this score motor here. This is called the score motor. And so basically this is what gives the addition to the game makes it where it can do math <laughs> so it spins around all right and as it spins it gets to different home positions and we have different things going on so if you look like on that masquerade we have where we had where this post was making one of the pop bumpers light up and as it spun around it could either be here or here right or over here and depending on where it was, it hit a different switch. So it does things like that. It's, it's how it gets like it's basically it's animation. And so if it's supposed to, if it needs to score 30 points or 50 points, there's a switch on one of the little cogs down here. And as this turns around, it presses the switch five times, which makes the point score five times, which gives you 50 instead of 10 and, and all of that. So you get kind of an animation and then kind of a like a math effect out of that. Um, but it's very straightforward. You just basically, same thing, clean the switches, and then they should, if they're closed, they should open. If they're open, they should close at some point. If you get them and they, like the switch is always closed and it never opens, well, it's something's wrong. It's not adjusted right. So check that out and figure it out. If one of them's always open and it never closes, something's wrong. Check that out. That sounds very simple, but it took me a long time to figure that out. It's such a simple concept, but once you understand that, you don't even really need the schematics. You can fix the machines, theoretically, without even having the schematics. If you go through and make sure every switch that's open closes at some point, and every switch that's closed opens at some point. It's just as simple as that. Um, so I'll clean those. Usually you don't have a problem where the motor goes bad or anything. <laughs> All right. uh, and then we have this. Uh, this relay bank, reset bank, whatever they call it, you can take loose with these. Now I will tell you, I know for a fact on these Godlips that a lot of times the reason this won't work is because of this switch right here. So we'll show that here in a little bit. 
there's there are all these relays on the top and then there's one underneath one switch underneath so uh, we'll look at that here in a little bit but let me clean that and then I'll open that up and we'll check it out all right so we're doing the same exact thing on all of these relays in this reset bank but there's two issues so the first is that switch we were talking about so this switch is on the bottom of I think that's the start relay and so if you look really close I know for a fact that this switch is involved in that reset um, coil that they're having trouble with. If you look really close, see how it's open right now? The contacts are not touching. So the way it's supposed to work is that whenever this trips, the contacts touch, which they are. So it is adjusted properly. Now I cleaned it so it could have just been that it wasn't clean. But whenever it's like that, it should be open. When the relay trips, it should be closed. But we've got other issues going on here. Um, yeah, see we got, we got stuff going on, man. This damn thing. Okay, so check this out. This is the game over relay. and it will not stay up. So it will not latch back into place because that plate stays down. So whenever this one's tripped, I push it up and it goes back, right? So that's what this does, the reset relay. It comes through, this bar hits this whole bar, which pushes all of these up, but the game over one keeps tripping. I have the power off. Sometimes if the power's on, some of them trip because it other switches are providing power to them, making them trip. But this is a physical thing. Physically, it will not go back up. All right. So we need to look into that. So there's something with this plate uh, not allowing it to go back up. And then this one is the one that we were just messing with. Now remember what I said. It is open right now. Right. And when it trips, oh. when it trips, it is closed. Okay, so it's working right. This one though is not, so we gotta figure out why that is. It may just be stuck. Okay, so I just with that a little bit. If that trips it, and that opens it. Okay, we're good now. It was just stuck. The plate had slid out of the way. And you saw what it was doing, though. That could have been their whole problem, that the plate was just... If it gets where it's not in the bracket properly, it could make it where it does stuff like that, or if the spring is misaligned or something. But you saw what was going on. It was stuck a second ago, and this wouldn't latch, but now it will. Okay, so that could have fixed us. But this switch here is often problematic, so that may be the reason that they were doing the rigged up thing with the uh, reset coil, or it could be something else. But I cleaned it. It's adjusted properly. Um, so we're just going to lay this back down and then we'll keep working through it and we won't know for sure. We won't know for sure until we get try to play it and try to do the troubleshooting on it. But that is everything down under here. So, uh, now it's time to work on the bottom of the play field. What do you think? I'm going to run right through this sucker. All right, play field back in it. So, we have to clean these Jones plugs. Look how dirty. It's from 1963, people. That's a long time ago. 57 years worth of grime. So people have said you can clean these with deoxit and stuff. I just use really light sandpaper and just sand all the crud off of them. So I'll clean them up 
and then we can plug it back into the uh, into the bottom. They call these Jones plugs. So clean up the Jones plugs next. Okay, so we got those much cleaner. Look at that, nice and shiny, so they'll make good contact. And then the actual uh, female part of it down there, you can clean with a barrel brush. That's all I can say about that. If I say any more, they'll kick me off YouTube. A brush to clean the inside of barrels. Just works real good. All right, so I cleaned those, I got to plug it in, and then I went through and I started cleaning the switches on the bottom of the playfield. It's the same exact thing. There's just switches everywhere. These are the spinner switches, three of them. So as the spinner spins around, it just makes that uh, switch there close and open. <laughs> Simple as that. It's the same way they work now. Um, all these years later. There is another little relay bank here on the bottom of the play field. Works basically the same way and it also has a little switch there. This one hits though whenever the arm resets so whenever whenever it tells it to reset it, it um, temporarily makes that switch do its thing. Someone has replaced the flipper plungers and links so they don't need replaced it that looks pretty good actually so we're looking pretty good somebody's been through this thing and it's been kept in pretty decent shape um, so the next thing that I'm gonna do I think all the switches are clean I don't know if any of them work we haven't even plugged it in yet next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up all these light bulbs while I'm under here so this is a good example they get all this soot on them Look at all that. So obviously you can see that whenever the light shines through on the top part of the play field. So I'm going to clean all that off. It's just like, uh, it's soot. It's just ashes basically. So uh, I'll clean all those and replace all the bulbs. They originally had 44s in them. But I'm going to put 47s in them, which are a little bit uh, more dim. And they use less power. So they, they, they use 40% less power. Um, and they're a little bit more dim, but it makes it where you lose a lot of your problems with heat and things like that. But a lot of people put LEDs in them. You can do that too if you want. I just don't like the way they look. Um, but we'll put 47 bulbs in it, get it looking nice and good. We'll plug that in. And then uh, it'll be time to check out the back box. We'll see if we can run through this one quick and at least get it up and flipping. And then we'll troubleshoot it and see what's... Uh, see what's uh, working and what's not working. Hopefully our little reset coil will work. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to clean these. Boy, they look pretty rough too. Look at that. And you know that's not electrically conductive. You know that needs to be cleaned. Look at that crap. Bleh. Bleh. All right, so we'll do it first, and uh, we'll see how that ends up looking. And then I'm going to do these, this grand total of six relays here. Boy, this, this one here is going a lot quicker than they usually do. I think because it's in just pretty nice shape to start off with. Um, we might have to order a bell for this zero to nine unit. I think it might have to have one on it. I'm going to... I'm going to have to look online and see if other people's do. Um, yeah, so we'll clean these next. And then uh, I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so we got those all cleaned up. Got them all plugged back in. I cleaned the six relays, same way that you do the other ones. So now we're up to the stepper units. So there's one, two three stepper units on this one. There's none actually in the cabinet. And uh, this one doesn't have any switches on the back. This is the ball, ball's played unit they're calling it. And there are a couple switches. Let me brighten you up. There are a couple switches. So you can see whenever it steps around it has the ability for this little post 
to hit this switch and close that one and open that one or whatever, you know. And then when it goes around this way, it can do the same thing. I don't know which way it actually goes, but um, I assume there's that word that is probably still adjusted. But I'm going to clean those two switches. And then we're going to very carefully, I guess we'll reset it and figure out where the home position is. See if it wants to cooperate. That's ball, so it's balls played. So that seems to have reset it. Whoop, maybe it did. I may have just messed it up moving it with my thumb. Hmm. So if I go this way. Pushes it that way. Yeah, <laughs> something's not lined up. So it really should only step a few steps. It shouldn't be able to free wheel like that. That's right. So it has, I believe, like 10 positions because there's two players and there's five balls. So that's as far as it will go that way. Let's see if this will get it to go the other way. No, nope, it's sticking. All right, so we're going to have to look into that and see if we can figure out what's going on. Something's not moving right or they've got something spun around wrong or... All of this seems to be moving. Okay. That seems to be fine. Sometimes you'll find a uh, a spot on the cog where there's a, it's designed with a tooth missing so that it will it'll only go one way yeah see you're not gonna be able to see this because it's too dark but let me get the flashlight I if I can get it to rig up here where you can get some light let's get some light on the subject and look very carefully. So there's a tooth missing. It's like that on purpose. It's so that whenever you get to that point, that it, it can't go any farther. Like it can't. Um, which one are we doing? This one. It can't lift up any farther because it doesn't have a tooth to grab. So they've, that's where it's supposed to start. Now, that should presumably get it to reset all the way back. All right, so I need to take this apart, clean it, get it oiled up, and then we'll look at it again after that. So I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to um, mark where this is and then take it off so that I can put it right back on at the same spot. And you need to put it on the same direction relative to where this post is basically you know what I mean if this spins all the way around to here and I put it on I just put it on completely backwards so with the post in that position <laughs> we want the arm on basically the first rivet it's a little tricky but I'll take it apart and if I once I figure it out I'll let you know Okay, so I took it apart, oiled the shaft, and then I put grease on the rivet board, cleaned the rivets to get them nice and shiny. See how shiny they are? Look at that. Shiny, shiny, shiny. And then I put the thing back together, and then I adjusted it so that the, you know, that post spun around to where it was touching the, the uh, switch. And now that it's all clean, let's check it out. 
So this is ball one, player one. Ball one, player two. Ball two, player one. Two, two. Three, one. Three, two. Four, one. Four, two. Ball five, player one. Ball five, player two. And it won't go anymore. Right? And then, let's reset the game. Bam! Now, whenever you do this, on, on stepper units like this, you need to make sure that the game doesn't always reset from the very end. Like, you might get to where it's ball two, player one, and somebody tries to reset it. You know? So it needs to, that spring has to be tensioned right where it'll reset from anywhere. You know what I mean? So like if you're way up here, you've got a lot more tension on the spring, so of course it resets it. But now I'm only one step up, but it resets. So you need to you need to get it like that. So that one's nice and clean. So now we got this one. Look at that one, how pretty it looks. Look at this one. Ugh. Disgusting. Nice. Ugh. So uh this one's gonna be simpler though, because there's only one coil on it. So it's a zero to nine unit. All it does is just spin around. Over and over and over again. It just keeps going in one direction. So really all we've got to do is clean those rivets under there that are all dark and dirty. That aren't shiny like the other one, right? So I'm just gonna take this off. You can see there's also a little bit of adjustment here that you can do in case you get it where the the um, the needles here, the pins, aren't lining up very well with the uh, rivets, right? So you can you can adjust it a little bit, but on this one you don't have to be so careful about putting it back on exactly how you took it off because it just always goes around in a circle, so it's never in the exact same spot anyway. So I'll take that one apart and show you what the rivet board looks like. Okay, so it's as simple as just cleaning them up. Don't go too crazy with it. Just basically getting the grease and dirt off. Make them look nice and shiny. And then whenever you get them how you want them, use this stuff. Synthetic grease. Boy, this stuff's great. The reason it works so well is because it's dielectric. It's an excellent dielectric. And it's also impervious to salt water if you get salt water all over it for some reason. I guess it's probably used on boats. So, uh... Yeah, we put a little bit of that on there, like you can see over here, see it? And it makes it where it conducts really good and everything's cool. And uh, that actually cleans it up and makes it run better. If you the, All this grease that's on there, the old stuff, gets gummy after a while and it makes it where it slows it down. So usually, that's all you have to do is clean it, clean the rivets, I mean the little posts on the back of that, and then put some of this on there, gets it moving smooth. Okay, folks, so our last stepper here is the replay unit. So basically, this is what tells the machine if there is a replay on it, what we commonly call a credit. Right? So, if you win a replay, it's the same as you won a credit. But they don't like the word credit, because that sounds like money. <laughs> and the government was all up their butt about whether or not these were gambling devices. So on the side, on this side, you have, it's just the same exact thing, really. It just looks a little different. You have your one coil here that we were working with, and then the other coil up here, right? And so as you press this one, it steps, right? And you have your little bar here that moves around and hits switches. So watch what happens when you step it way up. What's that? There is another bar on the other side, and eventually it opens a switch. Well, when it opens that switch, it's basically at the maximum number of, of uh, uh, replays, 
And so th it start it stops this having the ability to be powered. Now I can keep moving it with my hand, you know, but and so every time that it takes a credit, it takes this coil up here and it subtracts one. So there there are a certain number of steps on the gear like we were looking at earlier. Right? And it's instead of resetting all the way back to the beginning, it's resetting one step each time as it takes away one replay. And you see what's going to happen, right? So right now we're on like five or something. Eventually, oh, I had it going so good too with the light. Let's get some light on it. Eventually, you get down and the post, can't see it there. Let me get some light on it. The post <laughs> opens up the switch. Right, so. So the post, that's one correct, one replay. Zero replays, it opened the switch. So by opening that, whenever you hit the start button, it won't start anymore, because there's no replays on it. So all you have to do to put it on free play is you can either bend the switch where it never opens, or you can put a little jumper on the wires at the top. Right? There's actually two switches on this one. One of them will be uh, used to start the game. The other one, I can't remember what it's for. But for, for uh, there's, there's two switches. So if you bend them a little bit where they never open, no matter what that bar does, uh, it can't open, it can't make it where you run out of credits. So that's all you have to do to put it on free play. So we're going to do that, and then it'll be on free play. And then the only thing left in the back box is these six score reels. And then cosmetic stuff. Okay, so these score reels are about as complex as they ever got. This, these are, it's a 1963 Gottlob. So you won't see any usually that are quite this complex. Look at all that. I mean, just the one reel is a whole machine to itself, right? So this is what it looks like all together. And this is what it looks like once you get down in it. I used to take them out by just taking the cam off, but like taking that little clip off, but I've been trying to just take it all the way apart lately. So there is, there are several switches down here, and as this cam turns, it hits the different switches at different times, which basically depends on what number is displayed. So it needs it to hit a switch at nine so that it carries over to the next reel and it needs to hit a, open a switch at zero so it knows that it's reset and all this. Um, so you've got that cam that you have to, to uh, get down to so that you can make sure that everything is oiled along the shaft. And then you have to clean all these switches. And then you have to turn it around to make sure as this coil pulls in that it's getting that it's opening the switches and that it's stepping around one step each time it turns. And then you have to clean all these contacts on here like we did on the rivet boards uh, so that the wiper that goes on it can make proper contact. You need to clean this wiper. And then above that is this piece with one little wiper on it. And then above that is mounted the actual reel. Now very carefully, if you look, see the little plastic pieces there? So there's a small one, a small one, and a slightly larger one. So the reel will actually only fit on there one way, on the cam. And since the cam is what uh, determines when it hits certain switches, the cam and the reel, and the numbers printed on the reel, are always in alignment because of that plastic, there's a small plastic stud there, small plastic stud there, and a larger plastic stud there. So if you try to put the wheel on, you know, if the cam's positioned where it's supposed to be at number one, if you try to put the wheel on a third off, it won't fit because that one stud is too big. Hell of a little design. So I'm just going to go through and clean them and make sure they all step and all that, and uh, we'll get those six done, and that'll be the last thing, and then we'll... Uh, We'll try to start a game and see if it's even going to attempt to to uh, work for us to end the video. And we'll work on some more of it on the next video. But let me get started cleaning on these. There's only six of them, so it shouldn't take too long. All right, folks. So I got all the way to the last one. 
that one was fine. 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 And then I get all the way over to here, and this one is a mess. So they have unhooked the coil, which is fine. But the reason they unhooked it is because this paw has broke. Can you believe it? Right? So the part that the spring attached to is gone. It broke in half, so I need to order one of those. There's also a metal piece that goes on it that attaches to the other side. So in a future video we'll show us putting that on. And then I'd also need the spring. Hmm, you know what though? I had a spring. I found one. I wonder if it's the right one. Sometimes you find stuff. You know what? That might have been a different game. Yeah, I was working on another game. Apparently I don't have the spring. Alright, we'll get one of them too. But, uh, so I can't finish that one. But just for us to do what we're doing. I've turned it around until it's set on zero. Right? So whenever the machine resets... It will think this one's where it needs to be because it's already on zero. So that ought to work. So I have to order that stuff. Also, I confirmed that the bell is missing from the bottom of the zero to nine unit. I have to order that stuff. You can get all this stuff from the pinball resource. Now, I don't know if they'll have that broken part on that old rat trap score reel, but they might. Oh, those are called uh, rat trap. <laughs> That's kind of like the, uh, the nickname for them. Um... But I think we're ready to try to start the thing just to finish off this video. So I will uh, I'll button up the front of it and then we'll see if we can plug it in and if it does anything. Hopefully something. Okay, when I plugged it in, the lights came on on the back box. So it's trying something. And it made some kind of noise. I don't know what kind of noise it made. But it tried something. So I've got it on free play, I believe. So I'm going to try to hit start. And see if we get anything happening. Oh, you know what? I need to drop this play field down. Let me do it with both hands. That's down where she goes. So let's uh, let's attempt to start it. Now, it may not do anything, but we'll see. It tried. It did something and then stopped. And it didn't reset all of the, uh, the score... Hmm, you know what though? I've seen it do that before. Sometimes on a Gottlieb, here we're dark again. Sometimes on a Gottlieb, if this is on the first ball already, it won't completely reset the score motors because this gets down to zero and it goes ahead to ready to serve the ball. So what I'm going to do is we're going to try it again. I'm going to try to step it up if it'll even let me. Look like it just... Yeah, okay. So we're going to step it up off of the first ball. I had it on the first ball because we'd been messing with it. And then we're going to try to reset the game. And see if that will reset our scores. It did not. It is, it is deducting a uh, credit. <laughs> so maybe, it's, maybe she's ready to flip. What do you think? I don't have the plunger in. And my finger is not long enough. Now we got some little issues. It was trying. Got something locked on. The one point relay is stuck. Usually when that happens you get something stuck on the play field. Well we've got issues definitely. Maybe it's our spinners? No. I gotta turn it off before it burns something up. Whew! 
She's getting there. At least she lights up. What do you think? <laughs> all right, folks. But when I tried to start it, it gave me all kinds of trouble. So we don't have it working yet. But we've at least went through and cleaned everything. So I ordered the parts for this score reel. Through the magic of YouTube, you won't have to wait until I get those parts in. On the next video, I'll have the parts and we put them in. Um, so we'll make sure to film how all that goes. Make sure and subscribe if you like the channel. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And leave your comments below. And we'd also like to thank everybody that's been using all of our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, down below we have links to Amazon. If you click those links, they will take you to Amazon. And then uh, if you had to decide to buy anything on there for Christmas or anything, or uh, maybe you want some tools to help you work on your old pinball machine, anything you buy on there at all, from a Ferrari to a, uh, a file for the machine, <laughs> Uh, it pays us a little uh, a uh, royalty. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Thank you. And then finally, you know, I was thinking about this little pipe that they had rigged up in there. All right. And so I'm thinking, what can I do with like a little piece of pipe? Who do I know that would need that? Hmm. Man, it's always tough doing all that. Hey, Donnie. Yeah, I got something for you here. Think you can use that? That's a half inch cup for the water line. We uh -huh. could have used that last week when we were changing that. Oh, water. man, I'm too late. It was inside the pinball machine. Huh. I'm working on it, uh, trying to get it fixed up. We'll keep it. We'll use it. Hey, uh, t tell them about uh, your channel a little bit. Hey, make sure you come to over to my brother Donnie's channel. That's my channel, my brother Donnie. <laughs> I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers before Christmas. I got Wait, I don't know if this video will be up before Christmas. I got 200 more to go. <laughs> get me there. Hey look, the Lockharts are out working on some upholstery. <laughs> They're all waving. <laughs> they think we're filming them. <laughs> Yep. Hey, I got to go back and finish this pinball machine up. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll see you next time. Okay. This is always the toughest part. Well, he acted like he wanted it, so I gave it to him. Hmm, cool. Maybe he can use it on something. So if you don't know about my brother Donnie that you just met, uh, make sure to uh, go check out his channel, too. I'm usually over there with him, and we're usually working on... Uh, uh, we've got an old building, an old grocery, little tiny grocery store that we're working on, and we're filming some videos of that. And uh, he is always getting into something interesting. So go check out his channel too. It's called My Brother Donnie. The link is here down below our regular videos. But we appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Make sure to give us a thumbs up again. Like I said, make sure you always just give us an odd number of thumbs up. So if I tell you three times to give a thumbs up and you follow it each time, that's fine. But if you do four, that messes it all up. So always an odd number of thumbs up. So uh, we'll see you on the next video where we'll keep working on this thing. I hope you enjoyed it.